Are you getting started with resin 3D printing and want to know some really cool items that may help out your workshop and make your printing a little bit easier? Well, join me today as I talk about just that. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are looking at resin 3D printing, some accessories, we'll call them, that can really kind of help out with getting started and make it a neat and clean and healthy experience. So with that, you know, it's one of those things, resin 3D printing, you're messing with a chemical liquid that can burn you, do all kinds of nasty things, has horrible fumes, and it's worth discussing to make sure you follow nice safety and also make it a clean workspace because resin 3D printing can be very messy because you've got, you're dealing with a liquid chemical. So what I'm talking about today are just items I did the same thing for the FDM 3D printing that can just make things easier, cleaner, and are good things to have on hand to help work with your resin printer. So that's what we're gonna cover today. So with that, before we hop into that topic, if you're new here and just interested in 3D printing at all, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So we talk about all kinds of things, 3D printing and laser engraving and all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're, if you're here and you follow us and you watch us, thank you for that. So, and if you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out there, um, gets the analytics out there, so more people find us in the searches. And also, if you've got a question, make sure you leave it down in the comments down below so that we can help you out. Also, if you've got a topic suggestion for a video that might be interesting, leave that down in the comments down below too. I'm always looking for new interesting ideas to explore. But with that said, let's start taking a look at these items that can be very helpful and are great suggestions to get started with 3D, resin 3D printing. All right, you guys can see here, I've got a whole little tool bench full of suggestions. And now keep this in mind, this suggestion, this is what I find works well for me in my resin shop. I have multiple resin printers. Um, I have the Sonic Mega 8K, I've got the Saturn S. I've got a wide assortment that I work with. So I found that these are very common things that help out through the process. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about are wonderful microfiber cloths. So I get a 20 pack of these at Home Depot for like 10 bucks. So they're really helpful, they, they're absorbent, they help clean up, they help clean the screens and all that kind of stuff and keep things clean. Now one thing, you're working with resin, do not try to wash them. Get rid of them when you're done. You throw this in your washer, you're gonna ruin your plumbing and your washing machine. So be prepared to get rid of them. Some people use the blue paper towels I like these because it doesn't leave fibers and stuff behind in my printers that can mess up my resin vat and stuff like that. So very helpful tool, very cheap. Links will be down in the description for all this stuff out on Amazon. One of the most important things, if you're gonna be working with resin, nitrate gloves. Get you a good set of nitrate gloves. Now a lot of times the printers come with a couple pairs and they're the five mil millimeter. I prefer the seven millimeter, especially when I'm pulling a print off a printer and I'm pulling off supports. A little bit stronger, a little bit sturdier, less chance of it ripping and me getting that chemical on my hand and risking a burn or something like that, depending on the resin that you're using. So always get you good nitrate gloves. Um, the box in my hand, I even keep the nine mil on, on hand as well, depending on what I'm working on. If I know I'm gonna be sitting, taking supports off for a couple hours on a project, I may wear the nine millimeter just to protect my hands. These here came from Harbor Freight, but there's links in the description down below to some good options. So Allen wrenches, they're always ha handy to have around because at some point you will eventually open up your printer. So they're handy. A lot of the printers come with Allen wrenches. I like the Allen wrench key because they're all in one spot. Makes it handy, easy to take care of and keep in my hands. The next thing, next tool. A lot of the resin printers come with them. Nice, good putty knife to get that pried away from the plate. So this is not what I like using. This is the one I had on hand. We're still unpacking from our move, so I don't have all my tools out yet. I'm still building our shop and all that fun stuff. But the Red Devil one that you'll find in the description is one of my favorite. A nice, sharp blade. Get in there, pop it off, not scratch your build plate. It's a really good thing is to have a really good strong, not these flimsy benzies putty knives. So make sure you make a good investment in a good putty knife. So with that said, some folks may have allergies or problems with the chemicals. 
If you are not in a well ventilated space and you're going to resin print, open a window, ventilate. Um, some of these resins are very toxic and you don't want to hurt yourself. And I'm going to talk a little bit more of that here in a second, but if you need to make sure you wear a face mask, they can always be helpful. Every little layer of protection helps. But when it comes to the fumes, this is the anti-cubic version. These little charcoal air filters, they're USB powered. I don't have the charcoal block in this one, but a little charcoal block sits in there and basically you charge it with a USB-C and you put this in the printer while it's printing and I caught it. So these run for about $25 to $30 for a pair. And I keep one charging and I keep one going. And with my big Mega 8K and all those, I'll swap them out mid print or something. I'll keep an eye on them because it'll be green light when it's fine and running, red light when it needs a recharge. So definitely worth the investment to keeping clean air. Now, the other thing you may want to invest in is a very good pair of snips. Some of the resin printers come with them. Some of them I have this pair from um, FDM 3D printing. So keep in mind, one of the things you want to keep in mind with this is a good pair and they're going to get messy. So don't make it your primary pair. Dedicate a pair to your resin printing. So always use it in the resin. Um, that way you're not you know, getting uncured resin on your hands when you want to use them and stuff like that. Dedicate a pair to it. And a lot of times what I do is I have a plastic tub. All my resin tools and stuff are in there. There's cloths along the bottom. I pull a print out, get it cleaned up. It'll dry in that box and everything will happen in that box until it's cured. So all those tools always stay there. They're my resin set. And then I can close the lid to contain smell or anything like that for future instances. So I usually dedicate a set of tools just to my resin printers. So a good snips and the Ardow ones that are in the description are some of my favorites. I can't find mine right now. I'm a little worried <laughs> I've lost them. I may have to order a set myself. So keep that in mind. So these next two go hand in hand and usually come together and are sold together on Amazon, but a good funnel. This guy, I like him, he's collapsible. You know, easy to store, easy to clean up is handy because you're going to be pouring resin out of your vat bay into a bottle when you need to clean the vat bay. And that's where this other piece comes along are these water paper mesh filters to help filter out all the bad stuff. You just put them in there, pour your resin in, and you make sure you don't get any of the big chunks back in your resin bottle because that's no bueno because pouring it right back in just going to mess up your print again. You don't want that. So these are a handy pair that I like. I like having the collapsible because I can put it away, put it out of sight. These, I usually buy these in like a hundred pack for, I don't even remember how much I paid last time for hundred pack. It wasn't a whole bunch. So two things to definitely keep around. Also, you're going to be working with the nature alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, depending on what cleaning agent you want to use. So a good set of funnels is always handy. So you want to make sure you have something to control it. The other thing is your work area. So these silicon mats, you get two of these for like 13 bucks. They're meant for little kids. But honestly, you'll see these in a lot of my videos coming up. They're great because if resin spills off of something and gets on this, it wipes right off. Keeps a good clean work area, keeps a safe work area because you can easily clean it. Where if you get it on a tabletop and stuff, it can be very hard to clean. You may have to dab your cl a cloth in isopropyl alcohol or something. Then you got chemicals on your workspace where these are handy. When you're not using them, you can roll them up, set them to the side. Can be a very great little tool and they're nice, good size. So definitely check out the link down below. And as I come to some of the last items on my list that are handy for the beginner or even if you're experienced and looking for something to fill a gap. When you get a new 3D printer, when you have any 3D printer, the FEP can get damaged and cause a leak. The last thing you want is hardened resin on your LCD. It's the last thing you want because it can severely damage your LCD, which then you're paying to, three, depending on how much your printer is, anywhere from $50 to $600. Believe me, I don't want to ever replace one on my Mega 8K. I know how expensive that screen is. I don't want to do it. So investing in a good set of screen protectors. These are the ones for the most, 
for the Saturn S and Photon Mono X size. They make various sizes are a good investment. Make sure you're taking care of your printer. These may cost 30 bucks for two or three of these, but it's a lot cheaper than replace and a lot less time consuming than replacing the LCD screen. So if you have a FET break, you pull this off, you slap a new one on, you're right back to cruising and printing um, after you replace your FET in your bag, which brings us to the next point. It's always handy to have spare FET film around. You're gonna break a FET. It's gonna happen over time. It's just gonna happen. It's just a clear piece of plastic that's constantly having a model ripped off of it. It's eventually gonna tear, it's eventually gonna break, or you're gonna accidentally nick it or something like that, moving it around. That and they can get cloudy. So having FET film around is very good. Keep around in your, in your inventory because if you don't have it and you gotta wait to order it, then you're stuck without being able to print for a few days. So these usually can run anywhere from $20 up to $100 depending on your printer. So depending on what you need. And this brand has been very good to me. Um, link will be down in the description below. This is the ones that I use for the Saturn S and the Photon Mono K. They usually come in a five pack. And you can see how the FEP is designed there and how the material is actually kind of supposed to be stronger. So, and super durable. So definitely a good thing to keep around. Now, the final two things I want to talk about is during the cleaning process. We're printing with resin. If you've got a wash and cure station or a big drum that you're cleaning stuff in, it's really easy to lose little parts and in the cleaning station they fall down, they get through the basket and then they get in your thing and they get broken in the spinner and get broken. Well, my solution to that is tea infusers. So I put the small part in the tea infuser and then I throw the tea infuser in the resin in the I use denatured alcohol for cleaning. I prefer that over isopropyl. Um, it's just my preference. I think it works easier. I think it works better um, long term. And just for me, that's what I like to use. Cost wise, it's, they're about the same, give or take. But I pop open the tea infuser, I put my parts in, close it up, and just throw it in there and let it sit in the basket and let it wash. So there's multiple sizes you can buy, but because it's so thin, the, the alcohol is still moving through but your parts are not. So, and even this one, um, it's great because a lot of times what I'll do too is I'll just take it by the arms here and I'll just kind of swoosh it around in the alcohol with a, of course, with a glove on my hand um, instead of running the full wash and cure for maybe a small figurine or something. So this one's just nice and handy. Puts it in, the, put them in, put the lid in, then uh, give them a swirl around. So awesome tool to help out with clean, with wash and cure. And when I bought these, they came in a two pack, so it's always handy to have them around. Um, safety notice, don't use that for anything else if you do use it for your resin curing. It is for your resin curing. The other thing is that I recommend, this is about the size of plastic tub I use. You can get about two of these for about $10 at Walmart in a pack. This is a 28 quart, um, 23 by um, 16. Nice little tubs great for cleaning stuff up. This one I have a model kit in. I also use it to store my models as I'm building model kits, but they come in very handy. Good way to keep your tools. I have one that I have a towel, old ratty towel on the bottom as I'm getting ready to take stuff out of the ice, out of the, the nature alcohol, let it wash. That one's only for that. And then I have another one that's got all the tools for peeling away supports and all that for gunk and pulling off the build plate. So that, I keep two of them for the process. So that's my suggestions of some great tools to get to help anybody in resin printing going. I didn't do any resin suggestions in this video. So that one is up to you and what you're doing with your resin. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not, if you're not new here. Thank you for your considered, uh, considered and staying subscribed as we keep moving through, make sure you hit that like button. It does help us out. And if you have any questions or additional things that I didn't talk about that might be kind of cool to add, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. And we will see you guys in the next video.